Good day folks, today in this video I'm going to show you how to capture bracketed photos on your DJ Osmo Action. Bracketed photo sets are traditionally used when editing HDR photos and it allows you to turn a photo such as this into a photo like this. So let's just jump right into it and take a closer look. So one of the nice new features of the DJI Osmo Action is the ability to capture bracketed photo sets. These bracketed photo sets are traditionally used for creating HDR images. If you're not quite sure what a bracketed photo set, it's basically a series of images all at different exposures. For example, if I take this plant and take a photo of it, a bracketed photo set would have a normally exposed photo, an underexposed photo, and an overexposed photo. And the reason why you would capture three differently exposed photos when creating HDR images is it helps you capture more detail in all the highlights and lowlights. All cameras have a limited dynamic range. So for example, if you're taking a picture of a fence and behind it there's a bright blue sky, but the fence is fairly dark, it's hard for the camera to properly expose everything. You can either expose it for the sky to get nice detail in the clouds, or you can expose it for the fence to get nice detail in the wood grain. And that's where a bracketed photo set comes in at different exposures. You would take a normal exposed photo that kind of has everything generally exposed. You would take an overexposed photo that would give you a lot of detail in the fence, but the sky will be blown way out. And then you would take an underexposed photo where the fence would be really dark, but the sky will give you lots of detail. You can see all the texture in the clouds. Now doing this in the past on action cameras was fairly a, a daunting task. You had to go in manually and set your exposure for every shot. And the problem with HDR photos is that you don't want the camera's angle to change because what you're going to do at the end is you're going to merge these three photos so things have to line up perfectly. Now the software we will be using in this video later on will try and line up shots if they move a little bit but ideally you want your camera mounted on a tripod somewhere where it's not going to move and that's where the problem was before if you had to go in every time and change your exposure chances are the camera might move a little bit and uh, you can get a little bit of blurring or ghosting. But DJI has made it very easy. They have a mode where you can actually capture bracketed set so I'll just show you here quickly if we go to photo this first icon there the AEB if we click on it that's basically our bracketed photo sets we can swipe up to set our parameters so basically we can shoot a five bracketed set so we'll have five photos at different exposures or we can shoot a three bracketed set so we'll have three photos at different exposures so you can see there where it says 3p that means there's going to be three photos the first part of that is our exposure value basically telling us what the exposure difference is going to be different from each photo now ideally you want a fair separation the max you can do on here is one step so you can see there it's one ev step and it's going to be taking three photos so you're going to have your normal exposed photo, then you're going to have an underexposed photo one step back, and then you'll have an overexposed photo one step up. Now normally three bracketed photos is enough for creating good HDR photos. Usually when I do it on a DSLR, I like to have a two step difference. So I'd like two steps up and two steps back. You can't set that on the Osmo Action when doing a three photo set, but it does do it when you're doing a five photo set. So for example, I can you can see there I have one EV and it's going to take five photos. So what happens is you're going to have two photos underexposed at one EV step per photo. So your lowest exposed photo is going to be two steps and the highest one is two steps up. So once we have that set, we can just go in, take our photo, and it's going to fire off five photos really quickly. Just like that. And they're all going to be at different exposures. Now I took that photo handheld and you can do that when taking HDR photos. But ideally, like I said, it's best to have it on a tripod where there's going to be no movement. So now at this point, all we have to do is transfer the bracketed photo sets to our laptop or PC or Mac, depending on what you use, and we can do our editing. Unfortunately, at this point, there's not really a lot of good HDR editing software for an iPad or iPhone. That probably will come maybe more with time as it becomes more mainstream to edit on an iPad. So we'll take out our memory card. And the easiest way to transfer it to your PC is just to use those little adapters that come with your memory card and then we can just plug it into a card reader. So I went out this morning and captured a few bracketed photo sets and you can see here in front of us, there they are. These are our underexposed photos. You can see they're dark, but what it does is it gives a lot more texture in the sky. Now everything else, the low lights are kind of muted. You can't really see too much detail. The color's really off. Now if we go to an overexposed photo, you can see a lot more detail in the low lights, 
but the sky is pure white. You can't see any definition. So that's where the HDR software comes in. We're gonna take these five photos and merge them into one photo. Now, when it comes to HDR editing software, what I've been using lately is Aurora HDR 2019. It's a really good program. If you're into editing HDR or wanna kind of get into it, that's something you might wanna take a look at. I'll include the link down below to it in the description. So anyways, let's go ahead and launch it. So at this point, we're just gonna open up our bracketed photo set and we do so by clicking open image. So you just browse to where you have your photos stored and uh, I've got them there. So I'm just gonna highlight them all and then hit open. And you can see it lists here the photos and it shows you the EV stops. There's the normally exposed. We've got one step over and then two steps over, one step under and two steps under. So now we're gonna click on create HDR it's going to do its thing. And there we go. There's the final rendered image. So all the images here have been layered together and uh, blended. You can see right away how now everything is nicely exposed. We've got nice definition in the low lights. You can see in the grass here. The sky has a lot of detail, nice coloring. Now up here we can toggle on the before and after. You can see that's the normally exposed photo and then when it's processed you can see it just looks a lot nicer and here we can do a side by side now down at the bottom here we have different looks um, so depending on what you want your image to look like let me turn that off here so right now it's on enhanced landscape but we can go to warm landscape and you can see that looks nice as well you can do cool landscape better skies you can see it's going to give more definition in the skies and you can also turn the effect down a little bit if you click this button called collections uh, you can see we're on landscapes right now we can go over to essentials you can see it gives us a whole different uh, variety of uh, different looks we can have you can see that one's pretty strong it's got a really strong hdr look so it just depends what you like uh, they also have different packs there i believe you can buy over on the right hand side here we can go in and fine tune everything about the image i'm just going to leave it the way it is usually it does a pretty good job sometimes you might have to tone the uh, vibrance down a little bit sometimes it can get a little high it just depends on your own tastes and personal preferences and then when you're done you just click on the little save image here we'll put export to image kind of gives you all your parameters you can set uh, what you want to save it as now I'm just going to show you some photo samples here some before and afters So yeah, folks, as you can see, it's easy to capture and create stunning HDR images with your DJ Osmo action. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.